I guess to first time attendees, I would, there are a few camps in stoicism. And so there's not a single kind of stoicism out there. Um, I'm very much a pluralist when it comes to language, when people mean different things, when they say different things. And so one person says stoicism, and they may mean something else than another person who says stoicism. And so stoicism in the modern world is a rich milieu of different approaches. There are some people who kind of use it as a life hack of sorts in order to feel better, be more resilient, be more productive and things like that. While I think that's a great start, I think that is a little bit doing stoicism and people who adopt it, this stance, I think it's doing both stoicism and um, the people who adopt the stance in injustice. Um, in that stoicism is a coherent, rich life philosophy. It's not just a series of tricks in order to feel better. I think there are more effective ways to go about that if that really is your goal. But one of the differences between stoicism and things like therapy and life hacks is that therapy, um, like in the modern sense of the term, um, tries to work with um, mental health conditions, diagnosable mental health conditions. Um, and that's not what stoicism is about. Life hacks are... Um, used to kind of patch over some specific deficiency you see in your life. Like I am a procrastinator. Let me do life hacks for procrastination. And that's not what stoicism is about either. At the end of the day, stoicism is a complete system that require, and for it's for its tricks to work to, in a sense, you have to kind of buy into and understand the theory. And so one of the goals that I try to accomplish when I talk about stoicism is to introduce people to the broader stoic system, as opposed to just using it as a trick to feel better along with, um, exercise and, um, deep breathing, and also a little bit of stoicism on the side. Um, stoicism at the end of the day is as a, gives you values to live by. It actually kind of derives them and then holds them in front of you and say, Hey, do you want these? The ancient Stoics thought that this, the set of values were the most natural way to live based on the kind of creatures we are, the kind of things human beings are. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with that. I do think that different people can choose different systems, um, but I do agree with the ancient Stoics in that everything works together. And for new people who um, are coming to Stoicism for the first time, I would recommend taking your time and checking it out because um, Stoicism is not about trying to tell you it's the best thing or maybe ancient Stoicism was to some degree, but I think modern Stoicism isn't. And I think that's for the best since different people have different goals and different things work for different people. So take your time, explore what Stoicism really is and get into some of the deeper stuff as opposed to just seeing five minute uh, YouTube videos or uh, a couple of quick blog posts or um, inspirational tweets. Really dig into it because this is kind of meant to be a philosophy that you're going to ultimately guide your life by. Um, and one of my favorite quotes from Seneca is from Letter 71 saying, if you don't know what port you're sailing to, no wind is favorable. And so Stoicism's goal is to give you that port and you can say, hey, do I want, is this a place I want to go? And then once you understand that, then comes the hard work, which is slow, consistent, and a lifelong practice at the end of the day. So I'm afraid there are no quick fixes in stoicism and coming to it for that. If you really are set on quick fixes, I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place. But if you're interested in exploring more, I would encourage you to do so. Yeah, I would like to speak a little bit about the Stoic Fellowship. So we were incorporated, I believe, in 2017. So we're a nonprofit based um, in Minnesota. That's where we're incorporated, um, United States. And the goal of our group is to build, foster, and connect Stoic groups around the world. So what that means is anybody who is interested in starting a Stoic group can come to us and we'll do our best to help in a few ways. One is to provide content to get you off the ground, to try to give you some ideas of how to run your group if you're new to Stoicism and don't know exactly where to start. Another thing which we can try to help with, although it sometimes is difficult, especially in sparsely populated areas, is to introduce people to each other and try to get your group to grow. And we do this in a few ways. We list your group on our website. We send out um, your group in monthly newsletters. We collaborate um, with uh, Chuck uh, Chaprasinski in Toronto um, with his magazine, The Stoic, which is online free and released monthly. And he lists um, the groups affiliated with the Stoic Fellowship there. And so through that, we hope to be able to get some members to your group. As I said during our my introduction, the reason why we found that founded the Stoic Fellowship is because one of the things that is semi-missing in modern Stoicism that other like, you know, quote unquote competitors, although I'm not sure I'd 
feel comfortable with that word exactly to stoicism provide a lot of sense of community um, that modern stoicism does not necessarily provide. And we see in the ancient texts that Stoic communities were important from um, the association of um, the Stoic opposition against Nero to just Marcus Aurelius's Stoic tutor following him around and literally kind of slapping his hand figurative or perhaps literally when he goes uh, strays off. And so there is a lot of Stoic social interaction that doesn't necessarily exist or exists in a kind of ghostly form uh, in social media today. Um, I am pro probably, I'm somewhat negative on social media interaction. I think it is useful for certain things, but it has its limits. So the goal of the Stoic Fellowship is to help people try to build communities where they meet in person or during COVID times, video live, where there's some hope of interaction and talking to each other as humans are generally built to do over the millennia, um, to have some kind of back and forth and see each other's faces and do that as, uh, try to mimic that experience as reliably as possible using modern technology. We've also continued to encourage people to do online video meetings because sometimes there's people who's who are interested in stoicism but they live in a small town where a lot of other people wouldn't so it's hard to get people to the group so instead if you um if you have you could do a, an iowa based stoic as opposed to just your rural town in iowa and hopefully get some more people or even other people outside of iowa in uh the time zone that works for them in the language that works for them as well so our main goal is to help people build their groups and also help people find groups around them. So you could just go to stoicfellowship.com and scroll down a little bit and you'll see a map of groups that exist. And you can then reach out to them through by interacting with the map, or you can click the join us button in, uh, I believe that's the top right. And you can contact us and we can let you know if there's a group near you, or if you're interested in starting a group, you can also reach out to us and we'll try to help the best we can. Or if you have a group and you're like, hey, I just want to join the Stoic Fellowship so I can grow it a little more, then you can also reach out to us that way. So that is the Stoic Fellowship in a nutshell.